verse 5 in Genesis chapter 12. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the substance that he had gathered, and the sword that were gotten in Aram. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. They came to the land of Canaan. Praise God. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Sim Sikem. All right. Unto the plain of Moreb. And the Canaanites were then in the land. So this is not the time, this is not the first time that we are seeing Canaanite in the Bible. Please, no distraction. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, and said, unto, unto your seed I will give this land. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. God is telling Abraham before he became Abraham, before there, there was anything like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, before there was anything like the children of Israel, God was telling Abraham, in the land of Canaan, you see this land, I'm going to give it to you. You and your children. I will give this land. And there Abraham built an altar unto the Lord who appeared on him. And he removed from thence unto the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitch his tent there and having Bethel on the on the west and high on the east and there he built an altar unto the Lord and called the name of the place and then they call upon the name of the Lord in the in the place verse 9 and Abraham journeyed going on still towards the south Verse 10. And there was famine in the land. And Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there. For there was famine. For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass. When he was come near unto Egypt that he said unto his wife Sarah. Behold, I know the fair as a woman to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass when Egyptians shall see you, they shall say, This is your wife, and they will kill me, and they will save you. Say, I pray thee, you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and, for my, and my soul shall live because of you. Well, we know the, the rest story. Are you still here? Let's move down to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. Please, please follow me carefully. Just read the scriptures and then we'll begin to um, follow as the Lord is leading us tonight. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 and there was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham so famine started from the days of Abraham and Isaac Abraham's son went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gira. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt to dwell in the land which I tell you of. Dwell in the land which I tell you. Don't go to Egypt. So John in this land, verse 3, Genesis chapter 26, 
and I will be with you and bless you. For unto you and your seed I will give these countries, all these countries. And I will perform my oath which I have sworn unto Abraham your father. I will multiply your seed. I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven. And I will give unto your seed all these countries. And in your seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, I, I kept my commandment, I kept my charge, my commandment, my statue, my law. And Isaac dwelt in Gerah. You know the rest story. Praise the name of Jesus. Second Kings chapter 8. Second Kings chapter 8. Are you there? Let me read Second King chapter six, please. Hallelujah. Second King chapter six, verse twenty four. And it came to pass. Afterwards, that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in where? In Samaria. There was a great famine. And behold, they besieged it until the ass head, until, until an ass head was sold for four score of silver, pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cab of dove dung was sold for five pieces of silver. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me stop there. I wanted to give like seven scriptures. But let me stop there. And I want you to close your Bible. Father, give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. As we listen to your word, pierce understanding to our spirit and speak through me as somebody might be blessed in Jesus name please close your Bible as we begin to come to the end of the age when I mean end of the age you must know like I said on Sunday that all the signs that is happening to the earth today all the signs all these things that we are seeing they are not strange they are not new sickness, farming, hardship, hard times and not new to our generation. Am I speaking to somebody here? And paraventure, Jesus is not coming in your lifetime. The generation that is to come after now. When I mean after now, I mean we are in 2024. We are going to have 2029. And after 2099, 20, 20, then we enter another century entirely. If Christ started before that time, the generation that will come after that time, they are still going to experience worse things than the things that we are experiencing now. Am I speaking to somebody here? For the fact that God is speaking to you and that you are coming to church does not mean that you will not see famine. You will see famine, but you will not experience famine. You will see famine, but you will not experience famine. Somebody say better amen to that. How to position yourself to overcome famine is what Jesus came to do for us. Praise the name of Jesus. And then you must also understand the purpose why we are here. See, we are not here to buy houses and buy land, which is normal. Those things, God said, I will, all this land, you see all this land, I will give them unto you. All this land, 
I will give them unto you. Anything that is pertaining to land, material things, I will give to you. But that is not the purpose why I told you to depart from the world. That is not the purpose why I told you to separate yourself. I ask you to separate yourself because there is a purpose for your life. Are you still here? Are you, are you listening to me? So when Jesus now came, I want, I'm taking you somewhere. Because in the days of Abraham, they were waiting for a promise that is beyond land and house and cars and money. Are you still here? But before I move, now if you, if you want to put a title to this meeting, you can put, position yourself to overcome famine in the land. Because as I speak to you right now, Nigeria, we are in another level of famine. Another level entirely. That, it, that I've never been experienced before. Not that there, are, there have been no famine before. The, the queue, this, this queue that you are seeing today did not start today. 1974, they had queue. All the, all the time there used to be queue in Nigeria. It will not end. Even if Peter Obi comes, it will not end. So in the days of Abraham, God was using certain people to create an example that you can live above famine. That you can live above worry. Am I speaking to somebody here? If you as a believer is worried right now, and a non-believer is worried, both of you are in the same category of mindset. Am I speaking to somebody here? God did not, Jesus said that in this world you will have tribulation. How many of you know that? Please, no, please, please. I don't like that noise. Praise the name of Jesus. In John chapter 16, verse, verse 33. Please, somebody open. John 6, 33. John 6, 33. Praise God. John 6, 33. I don't want to elongate this message. Just a simple. John 6 33. 16, sorry. 16 33. Sorry. John 16 33. What did the Bible say? It said. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have what? Peace. In me you might have what? Peace. In the world you shall have what? Tribulation. Problem. Trouble. He said, but be of good cheer. I have what? I have overcome the world. I have what? I have overcome. Someone say overcome. In me you will have peace. Outside of me no peace so when god told abraham now follow me listen to me carefully i'm going somewhere follow me follow me abraham left his father's house before then they were having crisis already left his father's house and started going going until he got to canaan when he got to canaan god said to him you see all this land all this land i am going to give it to you and your seed but not now i'm going to give it to you and your seed but not now keep keep moving now abraham left everything before then egypt had become a nation egypt was already a nation before Israel was born as a nation. Israel was born as a nation inside Egypt. Africa has been existing. Africa has been a world power. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Why there were famine in the land where Abraham was coming from. They, they didn't tell us that there was a famine in Egypt. Praise the name of Jesus. There was no famine in Egypt. Egypt had money. They were a civilized nation. Abraham was the one that was presenting the nation called Israel that was not yet born. And God was speaking to him that I'm going to use you example to show that you can prevail in the midst of famine. So God took him to Egypt. When he got to Egypt, you know the story. He has already told Sarah, you're my sister. That was the game plan. Everything just changed. When they got to Egypt, they asked him, who is this? He said, it's my sister. Who is this? He says, my brother. And then before you know it, it's king. The king of Egypt took Sarah 
and in the night god appeared ladies and gentlemen why you were confused in your confused state god is already working a map he's already working out something better for you that's why i say do not be worried of do not be worried of do not be worried what to drink what to think what is it leave all those ones for me i know how to handle them but abraham was still you will die on time if you don't know how to rely on god you will keep worrying yourself over many things that you don't have control over if you don't just learn to have peace in your mind have peace in your mind if transportation today becomes 1000 people will still enter it you don't have any choice do you want do you want to trek you want to trek from here to your village or you want to be checking from here to 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 a, to a bus stop every day it's not possible you will break down and the money you will use to fix yourself will be greater than the money you used to enter transport it's a part of exercise but that exercise becomes a vigorous exercise am i supposed to here what I'm trying to say is that when Abraham got to Egypt, he became rich. That's what I'm trying to say. In case you don't know, if you read Genesis chapter 13 from verse 1, the Bible says that Abraham went up out of Egypt, verse 2, he became very rich in silver and in gold. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not by struggle that people are blessed. I have seen people who struggle. And then, see, it's not by struggle. You just rely on God. Rely on God. Anywhere God is not sending you, don't go. Anything crucial, any crucial thing that must be of value to you. If the voice of God is not involved, don't start it. Don't venture into it. Because it will be effort in futility. In the midst of famine, it is only the voice of God that is relevant. Listen to me. In the midst of famine, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of challenges, only the voice of God is what is relevant. Any other thing is irrelevant. And the worst part is that most believers we don't hear, neither do we seek the voice of God. Am I speaking to somebody in this house? We don't hear, neither do we seek the voice of God. And the most terrible thing, I preached the message here one time, about the voice of God, the greatest asset of a believer. The voice of God, the greatest asset of a believer. Please listen to me to help you. See, God does not change his rules. Are you listening to me? The Bible says that Jesus came into his own city. He could not do much miracle there. Why? He should have, he had the power to do it. Because God does not change his rules. God does not break his principle. God, God will not say, for this person, I would adjust and do, no 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 god does not do that every principle every ordinance every word of god applies to everybody god does not have favorites all of us are his favorite am i speaking to somebody here you are not hitting me so for instance the bible said that for without faith it is impossible to please god right and somebody is now crying that you know he that must come to God must believe that God is and it is a rewarder of them that diligently seek it. Now you are not crying. And so God, you don't want to answer me. Oh God, you don't want to answer me. Why now? Why now? That is not an act of faith. Praise God. Now, you do that and continue to do that, we, you will just get frustrated because at the end of the day, you are, not, you are not following the principle laid down that it takes faith to receive answer from God. If any man desire anything, whatsoever you desire, according to the book of Mark chapter 11, he said, when you pray, believe that you have received them. Not cry. It, there is no way the Bible says we should not bend our neck. When Anna was praying, and her voice was no longer heard, do you think, do you think that was not an act of faith? He said, I will not leave you until God answer me. Praise God. Somebody is not getting me here. Now, when she was praying, praying and praying, and her voice was no, was no longer heard, and Eli came and said unto her, her expectation has been granted. What happened to her? She stood up, and her canting has what? Changed. That's an act of faith. That she believed what the prophet said. That it is done. Am I speaking to somebody in this house? Now, if she, if she, if she, if she was there, and Eli came and said, your expectation is granted, and he said, no, ah, no, I must continue to pray. She will stay there and pray for a long time like Jesus, that his blood became thick like, like that of the blood, and we will not receive answer. Until Jesus said that, not my will, but your will be done, there was no angel that came from heaven. Because God cannot break his rule for anybody. He did not break his rule for Jesus. Will he now break it for us? 
God said to Isaac, because your father Abraham obeyed my voice. That is why I promised him that I'm going to give him all this land. Abraham obeyed my voice. I told him, stop, he stopped. I told him, move, they move. I told him, don't do it. He didn't do it. Abraham, before you became a man, before your father died, I told the father to sacrifice you, Isaac. And he obeyed. I told him again, Abraham, now don't kill him, don't kill him, leave him. And he obeyed. God does not bend his rules. He does not bend his rules. If you like, sleep in church for 90, 10 years. If you don't obey what God asks you to do, follow the guidance principles for us to overcome farming, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to cry like the world and nothing will change. Somebody say, I hear you. So Abraham got out. Abraham became very, very rich in silver and in gold without working. Just by obeying God. Are you listening to me? Without too much struggle. Just following God. Some of us are not following God. We are just following what we like. We, we, you know, naturally as human beings, we like to do what we like to do. We don't like it. Even if we give you advice. I was telling somebody the other day. I said, you say this girl doesn't want to marry you. You say the parents say they, will not, they, they, don't, they don't want to agree. I said, okay, leave her. He said, okay, I don't hear. Then he came yesterday and was telling me, I cannot leave her. I cannot leave her. God told me that she's my wife. I said, the parents, they didn't agree. The father said no. Mother said no. The guy now changed his mind and said, she's not doing. You still insist. And continue now. Why did you have to even tell me? Am I speaking to somebody here? I said, for a while, leave her. Go and be praying. And let God intervene. You don't solve spiritual problem by gra gra. Am I speaking to someone in this house? You don't solve. It's not by I get sense. No. People that have sense more than you, they are in the grave. Is anybody getting what I'm saying here? What word is God speaking to you right now in the midst of famine? What? What? See, in this period, if there is anything you need to build, two things. Your relationship with God and your faith. In the word of God. Nothing else. Leave every other thing. Leave every other thing. Your relationship with God and your faith in him needs to be very, very strong in this time period. Am I spending somebody here? Abraham knew that they were going to kill him in Egypt. He knew. How did you know? Because of Sarah, they were going to kill him. Because if you have said that Sarah was his wife and Sarah was so very beautiful. Remember that Abraham was 75 and Sarah was 65 and she was beautiful. He knew. So wisdom told him, Oga, at this point right now, both of you are brothers and sisters. Of course, they were even brothers and sisters in the, in the right sense. From the beginning, they were marrying themselves. But because of that, God still came through for them and then Abraham came out with silver and gold. What did God say to Isaac in the midst of famine? What did God say to Isaac? I want to give you scriptural part and we'll go back to Jesus. What did God say to Isaac? In the midst of famine, we read it there. Genesis chapter 26, Isaac wanted to run out and God said, stay here. Because what works for you is not what works for this one. You must have a word. But there is a principle. The principle is that the word of God is sure. The word of God is sure. It does not change. There is logos, there is rema. Praise God. You know there is logos, right? Logos. Logos is the written word. So say the written word. This Bible is the Logos word of God. It's the written word of God. Then there is a Rema word of God. The Rema word of God talks about the word that God is speaking now. For instance, God said to Abraham, carry your son, go and kill him, right? Amen? And as Abraham was going... Let's assume that Abraham did not hear God the second time. What do you think would have happened to Isaac? God is still, but he's not hearing. He will kill Isaac and thought that he has heard God spoke. He didn't hear me now. What, meanwhile, God is still speaking. God spoke and God is still speaking. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> You're not listening to me. Oh. Praise God. So God can change his mind from what he has previously said according to your relationship with him. You might move to a house. After a while, God said, move out from the house. But God told you to come to the house. And God is not telling you to move out from the house. So what will you do? Will you not be saying that, ah, this must not be God? It's God that is saying to you. 
because God is still speaking. God is a speaking God. God is not an idol. God said to Isaiah, go and tell the king, Ezekiah, that he was going to die. And as Isaiah went down, told him, God said, keep your house in order you are going to die. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Before he could get to the gate, God changed his mind. Are you listening to me? Because Ezekiah went to report himself to God. And God said, I have changed my mind. Meanwhile, God did not tell him. God did not tell the man that was praying. God had to speak to the prophet back because it was by his word that Ezekiah went, that Ezekiah went to the wall to pray. So he has to be the one to reveal. Because if God was speaking to him, we would not understand. So God had to still speak to that prophet to come back. And he came back with us here the Lord for the second time. Change of mind. You will not die again. You will live extra 15 years. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. That is the Rema word of God. Right now, all you need is the Rema word of God. All you need right now. It's not just the written word of God. The written word of God gives you hope. The speaking word of God, which is the Rema, gives you faith. Because faith coming by hearing. By hearing. As God is speaking and you are hearing, your faith is built up. Your faith is any Christian in this in this period right now. That see the Bible says that physical exercise profit little. There is what is called spiritual exercise, and spiritual exercise. One of the spiritual exercise you must learn is to learn to hear from God. And there are three ways to hear from God. Number one, by the written word. If you don't have the written word, you cannot get the spoken word. You are not hearing me right now. If you don't know the written word, you cannot receive the spoken word. So let the word of God richly dwell in you so that when he wants to speak, he will speak a scripture that you can understand. He cannot be speaking to everybody, he will speak to you directly. When God told me that he that endured to the end shall be saved, when our church was going through crisis in first time and people were leaving, even my friend that brought me left church, I remember because I had the Rema word of God, now word of God, the now I need that word now. You don't get what I'm trying to say. And so I stayed while others left. That's why I became a pastor. Not because I went to church, but because I had God said to me, he that endured to the end. That scripture was talking about the last days. In Matthew chapter 25, was talking about the, what will happen in the last days. And the Bible said that he, it does not correspond to that my situation at that time. But that word corresponds to me at that time. What is God speaking to you? When you come to church, I see people come to church and the, the best they can do is to be looking at other people in church. Oh, this person did not cover hair. This person wear trouser. You don't know the reason why you came home. You can never hear from God like that. Your heart must be prepared. Number one, I see you must go to the written word. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yeah? Number two, you must be a man of prayer. Because it is when we pray, there's a dimension where you will pray. You must hear God though. You didn't hear me well. There is a dimension you will pray. You will pray to an extent where you will just hear a voice. Strange voice you have never heard before. You will know that this is God. Hey, Shanaba. You see, I was even listening to Idris Abri Karim. He said he went to do fasting and prayer. And God told him that that is his wife. The first day that he saw his wife, he went to him and told him, you are going to be my wife. Such boldness. He said he has been fasting and praying for three years that he wants to get married. And I've been saying that here. And somebody from another faith saying the same thing. Because there are some things that pertain to life. You can't joke with just by making silly choices. You will pay for it. You will pay for it. I'm telling you the truth. Silly excuses, silly choices. You didn't hear God well. You didn't follow the principle. Ah, that your decision at that time when you took it is good. But for the times that are coming, it will not be good at all. I don't know if you understand me now. At that time, you took that decision for you at the time that Esau ate the porridge. That decision to sell his birthright was okay to satisfy his hunger. Hunger is not good. But he was not going to die because he was hungry at that time. Even if he did not eat, he would not die. I'm asking somebody here. But that decision that he took to sell his birthright and took that thing was okay for that time, but it was not okay for the future. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. It was not okay for the future. So, if we, every choice we make have consequences now and the consequences to come. Am I asking somebody here? We have to weigh the actions. 
The Bible said that the Bible said that the Lord, the Lord searches the heart of men and he weighs their actions. He weighs action. Every action comes by decision. So you have to be a man of prayer. Nobody should force you to pray. No. Prayer is beyond making requests. It's beyond making requests. Prayer is when I prayer is when you take salt and you put inside a water and you are stirring it and you are stirring it and you are stirring it first of all what the salt does that when you put the salt inside the water it goes down to the bottom of the water am i speaking to somebody here down to the bottom of the water but as you keep stirring the cup as you keep stirring the cup what are you doing you are you are mixing the salt and the what and the water together a time will come there will be no difference again there will be no separation again you are not getting me now there's nothing you can do that salt can never separate itself from that water as long as you have steadied to a point you have steadied very well it will now merge together when we pray we merge with divinity that is what is called koinonia koinonia is like somebody that is having you know what i mean inter inter and cause you understand what i mean that is fellowship that is that's why the bible says that may the grace of our lord jesus christ grace to do what grace to be able to pray praise the name of god and praise the name of jesus may the grace of our lord jesus christ grace to pray in the midst of weakness grace to study his word in the midst of weakness grace to do the things that god is asking us to do in the place of weakness because naturally our flesh is weak to do anything that concerns the that concerns God. Our flesh does not want to read. Our flesh wants to listen to music. Our flesh wants to go to social media. Am I speaking to somebody here? Our flesh naturally does not like anything that concerns the spirit. So it does not want to pray. It does not want to study. It does not want to go to church. It does not want to give. So stingy, so selfless, so selfish, so self-centered. That's our flesh for you. But the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ empowers us to do what the, the spirit wants us to do. Because the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is always weak. When it pertains to anything that concerns God, I said, God told Adam, the day you eat of the that's the day you will die. They still went there and ate it. Because naturally we like to go against anything that concerns God. And am I talking to somebody here? But when, once grace comes, it empowered us to do the things that God wants us to do. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God. Have you ever been in love before? So the grace of God gives us the ability to play we now enter into love you see now i want to stay with him in the place of prayer we now... let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find help and obtain mercy in time of need when we now come boldly to that throne even with all our mess we now find the love of god you won't like to live there. That is what prayer is. When you stay there, I'm not talking about the beginning of prayer. I'm not talking about the one minute of prayer. I'm not talking about five minutes of prayer because those five minutes, ten minutes prayer, they are all distractions until you continue. You enter 15 minutes. Then you begin to cut away from the thought that is rolling in your mind. And then 20 minutes, uh, you, are, you are off. You know when a plane is taking off, it's step by step. You understand? Uh, one feet, two feet. Uh, and then before you know it, it's 32,000 feet far above sea level. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? In that realm, it's cruising level. It's no longer flying. It's cruising. You are just cruising. Because you have got to an height where you have, you have some hindrances are gone. Some thoughts in your mind are gone. Am I telling somebody here? Yeah. You are no longer feeling, ah, I forgot something in my house. Oh, I'm supposed to call this person. When you are praying, all those start coming. Everything you have forgotten, if you want to pray, everything you have forgotten in this life, just carry pen and paper, put ground. Satan will remind you of everything you have forgotten. Am I lying? That's the elementary level of prayer. So the grace of God, you need the grace of God to be able to overcome that level where distraction is inevitable. You must meet it there. And then when you now surface that place, you will now enter into the place of koinonia, the love of God. The love of God. When that, that time you begin to enjoy prayer, you don't want to stop at that time. You don't want to stop. Oh. When you enter into that place, when you begin to pray, faith is built in that realm. That is where boldness comes from. Because in that place, when you enter there, there's a dimension you will enter. You begin to hear voices speaking to you. Even if you have not had God in your life, you will hear him that day. And God will begin to speak.
speak to you and tell you things that eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, that has not entered into the heart of man. I've lived my life just not that I'm perfect, just like that. Just like that. And I've shared my story with you. Why am I sharing my story with you? So that you too can also follow the same path because the Bible says we should follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. When I wanted to get married, I have different options. I have those coming from my father's bank. You know, those who were working with my father in the bank, they were coming to tell me, and my father was taking me to them. He was still with my language. Do you like this one? I said, no. With my language. After this one, I said, no. We were moving from counter to counter, and he was greeting all of them, telling me, the, you know, the code. Praise God. I said, no. You know why? You know, see, when you marry the one that God has not sent you to, you will carry the problem that God did not give to you. I just use that one as an example. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I went to the place of prayer. I put that down to abroad. While I was praying, I was still praying, oh God. Me, I want to marry Oyibo if you leave me. I want to have Oyibo children. That's my desire. And I had Oyibo girlfriend. I told you that now. Who we'll give birth to white children. But that is not the will of God for me. Because a point came when I told her, I said, I am going to relocate to Nigeria. You are going to follow me and the children. She said, to Fiakwa, God forbid, I am not going to that dead place of your... Never been abroad before. She never traveled out of that country before, so she doesn't want to go. So I said, from, this, from, the, from now henceforth, separate Paul and Barnabas. Because I cannot go against the will of God. And I am very bold in speaking my mind. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you have to be very bold to speak your mind. Anybody that is not helping you to achieve destiny, tell them bye bye this year. It's not by force. I still went to my phone 18th of November when I told that my one of my friends. I told him from today. See, I don't know till when Jesus will come. But from now onward, you can no longer be my friend. I told him, not that he told me, I told him, you I have the boldness to choose my friend. I've been and said that friendship is by what? Excuse me. Friendship is by choice now and it's not by force. So I choose my friend based on my purpose and based on the path that I'm about to take. Ah, prophet Isaiah, a major prophet said, I am a man on clean lips because I dwell with unclean people. So for me to now enter into the realm of God where I can be seeing things and prophesying things, I must move from unclean people to the next realm. And the Bible says an angel came and touched his tongue with the code of fire. Before then, everything that he was prophesying, no one came to pass. But after then, he started prophesying about the coming of Jesus. He prophesied about the birth of Jesus. Unto you a child is born. Unto you a son shall be given. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. He even called him Everlasting Father. What a revelation. Nobody from the days of, from the days of Adam to that time could look apart from David. Could look into the future and say this is what is going to happen. It was Isaiah that talked about the they beat him, they will beat Jesus. He talked about, he said, by whose tribe we were healed. Who was going to tell that someone like Jesus was going to appear and they were to flog him? Isaiah saw it. He said, when there is a level you will pray, there is a level you will enter with God, there is a curtain that must open for you. You must see vision if you are a man of prayer. Because your sons and your daughters must prophesy. And for you to prophesy, you must see visions. You must. Vision is not for, it's not for prophet, it's for every believer. That is, there is, there is a dimension you will pray. Some scales will fall out from your eyes. And God will tell you, from henceforth, this way, don't go there again, go like this. You don't need me as your prophet to come and be telling you everything. No. Even the 50 prophet, the sons of the prophet, they told Elisha, don't you know that your master will be taken away from you today? It's a dimension. And you come into that dimension in the place of prayer. Through grace, once you enter, you now enter into the place of love, which is the greatest, the greatest realm in the realm of the spirit is the realm of love. You didn't hear me well. It's a realm of love. He said, though I have faith that can move mountains, if I have no love, I am just for nothing. He said, I can prophesy, speak in tongues. He said, if I have no charity, he said, I'm like a sounding brass. Am I speaking to somebody here? He said, charity endures all things. And finally, he put it this way. He said, love never fails. That is, when you get into that realm with God, and you enter through grace into the realm of love, 
when you enter into the realm of love what next the fellowship the fellowship someone say fellowship when you enter love you have entered fellowship you see the dimension now when you come into that fellowship dimension it is hard to speak with language of men in that level when you have come into the fellowship of the holy spirit you cannot be speaking english in that realm you speak his language when you get to that realm you don't speak english again because it takes over your language it gives you the language that you can speak that they can understand and then they 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 they, they compress the language and bring it to your own understanding as a message to you so you'll be in the midst of family people are complaining and god is telling you move from this place isaac they close this way move to this place there's dig this way here and a dog there is water they came Close this one. Close that one. He moved to another place. They closed it. It's not by digging water because they, they themselves, they have dog and dog. They will dig 50 feet, no water. I dig, we dig 10 feet, he will see water. It's not by digging. It's by leading. It's not by digging. It's by leading. It's not by digging. It's by leading. In this famine period, please be led. If you are not led to go out, don't go out. Stay in your house. Stay in your house. I'm asking somebody here. Anything you want to do, at least 50% of anything you want to do, hear from God. Hear from God. Anytime we do things that we do by our flesh, we always pay the, con the consequences. How to hear from God, number three. Praise the name of Jesus. After you have studied the word of God, which is the first level. After you have prayed, which is the next level. You can hear from God when you pray. Praise the name of Jesus. The third one. Is that you have to be very very highly spiritual see when i mean spiritual you have to be spiritually minded be spiritually okay let me put it away be spiritually sensitive minded to be spiritually minded is life and peace be spiritually minded be sensitive it's because sometimes you will not be in a position to study the bible to hear sometimes you will not be in the position to pray to that kind of realm where you can hear so this time around you will need to be spiritually sensitive it's what they call the sound to be spiritually sensitive that's one you will grow from that place of prayer to enter into that one am i speaking to somebody out to be spiritually sensitive where somebody can be lying to you you'll just be laughing because everything that he's saying they have already told you that this guy is a born liar praise the name of jesus one of my sons coming today that were a pastor in our church. You know, just unfortunate. Married this girl out of the flesh. And then, yeah. I've known my wife now for 15 years plus. So, let's say their, their own marriage will be like 16 years or 17. I was the one that did wedding for them. But from that day of that wedding, I knew that crisis was already looming. Because this girl can lie. This girl will lie. Satan will be crying. She can lie. If you are single here, yeah, I would prefer you to marry a girl that is not submissive, that you can train to be submissive, than a girl that can lie. If you jam a girl that can lie, my dear, or a guy that can lie. Let me put in because two of them, vice versa. Praise God. But the worst one is a guy that can lie. A man said, 52 years old, he just discovered that his two children are not his own. 52 years. After 52 years of marriage. After 52 years of marriage. After 50. That means that the woman kept the secret for 52 years. No, you didn't. Maybe you don't understand. The man is not 52 years. Their marriage is 52 years. And for that 52 years, they have children who are like 50 years or 49, 40 plus. And those children are not not know until the day they got to know. What a heartbreak. That one can lead somebody to early grief. She kept it as a secret. Men don't know how to keep secret like that. You will find out. They can't keep it like that. But a woman can lie. 
and use another lie and cover it. Now take another big lie, cover it. Now sat on top of the lie and it becomes truth. And it becomes truth. She will sit on top of the lie because she has mastered it. And it lies becomes truth that you cannot deny it. She will give you evidence of lie that looks like truth. Lie is truth until truth is discovered. That's when lie becomes lie. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why am I digressing? Let's go back to famine. Praise God. I'm just saying about discernment. Do you understand what I mean? Discernment. One lady told me one day, if I marry you, I will help you. She you're a young pastor. I will help your destiny. I was still broke that time. If there is anything I say broke. I was very, very, I was very, very rich. Just imagine that time and now. She will have left that man she was doing. Am I speaking to somebody here? Because I know one of my friends that got married like that. They guess she's working in an oil company. The car she was driving, the, the 190 Benz. You understand? Those days in the 90s. 190 Benz. The girl was cruising it. This guy you know, mm, 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 went and married her. Only for them to marry, the uncle collected the car and said the car is for him. The girl was not working in the company, was just assisting. Until today, that marriage is still having a problem. The worst of it all is that the girl is older than that guy. Of money, we married the girl. Till today, they don't have children. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm not. I'm not trying to play down. What I'm trying to say is that if you are not spiritually sensitive, you are creating disaster for your future. Everything is not about now. Everything about life is not about now. It's not about now. Am I speaking to somebody here? It's not about now. If you marry now, oh, your wife, all her body is still standing. It will not stand like that forever. Whatever goes up must come down. Lot of gravity. Praise God. As the years keep going, everything will be coming down. Everything. Face will be coming down. She will not be fine as it met at that time. So you don't marry the flesh. You marry the soul. That's why they call it soulmate. You marry the soul. So that in case anything happened to those physical features, you will not be affected by it. Your soul long for that person. You will be in a far place. You are still thinking of that person. There are many options to choose by, by that time when you were choosing. But your soul gravitates to this person. Anybody your soul does not gravitate to, far, 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 foul. Am I speaking to someone in this house? I hope you are blessed tonight. Allah Almighty God will be say, God will not allow us to enter debt by stupid choices that we make right now. I can guarantee you that everybody that have crisis in their marriage, they got it wrong from the beginning. If they don't get it wrong from the beginning, something happened in between them that they, they gave way to a third party. One of them gave way to a third party, or both of them allowed Satan to just enter in. And even when Satan made Adam and Eve to come out from the garden, do you know that they were still married? Excuse me. He brought them out from the garden. He didn't bring them out for marriage, oh. <laughs> because they were so mates. Adam said, "This is the flesh of my flesh. This is the bone of my bone." No, we you, forget say we don't sin. We sin together. If we fall, we fall together. If we rise, we rise together. But this generation Gen Z say, I cannot marry a man that does not have money. If he does not give me 10 million every month, your papa, how much is he giving you every month? How much is your father giving you every month? If he does not give me 10 million per month, he is not the guy. You will old. You will have wrinkles. That's what they will be singing for you. <laughs> because you have used your mindset. You are not sensitive that the man that you are rejecting right now is a billionaire in the future. I told you on Sunday when Bishop Blessing went to toast one girl. And she, re she bluntly refused. Now she's the one begging. Be See, eh? she don't marry divorce. Come, come back. Bishop, I like it. Now maybe the middleman. Tell him I like him. I say yes. I, I will tell Bishop. I like him. Say leave that one. No. Leave her. I go. I go punish him. Your time. Bishop, come. 
be coming. She could not enter transport. They come. Say, stop. Go back. I don't change my mind. And she, she will happily go back. And they tell me, what happened? What happened? I said, I don't know what happened. Let me ask Bishop. Me, I know what happened. So I go, Bishop, she asked me what happened. Say, then I said, next tomorrow. Say, he said, may you say, next tomorrow, may you come. Say, next tomorrow, I'll be. Okay. Oh. Next tomorrow, she don't prepare. She don't dress. Bishop asked me. After she don't dress. Mm. Then I said, I don't change my mind. Say, Bishop, say, may you come next week. See why Bishop they be like that now? You know no say that punishment. If she was sensitive, sir, if she was sensitive that that poor boy, that that poor guy from Najegule that was talking to her was going to become a multimillionaire, now grab before you grab her. Bam! But this Gen Z generation, they will never see better husband. I'm not, it's not a cause, it's the truth. Because why? Their eye is like eye of owl. Owl. What they see now is immediate. They don't see the future. They don't see the future. And so what they are looking at, if you are not driving Benz, you, are not, you don't belong. Praise God. Somebody is already blessed. I was 16 years old when I started making a decision for myself. Even without being born again. I just sat down and talked to myself. I said, come, come, sit down, sit down, sit down. Nobody they advise you, sit down. Like some of you, you should advise yourself. You too, they spend. They spend money too much. Advise yourself. Sit down. Advise yourself. Cut down on many, many things. It's not because I don't... Me, I have money, but these days, I, I have cut down on so many, many things. I don't know if you understand. That. Cut down. Like the way I eat, I don't eat much again. I don't eat much before. Now it comes worse. I don't eat much. Wisdom. Oh. Someone say wisdom. Joseph said you don't eat everything. Everything is available. You don't eat everything when everything is available. So don't spend everything because you have it now. It will not always be rainy days. There are days when it's called a dry season. Rain will not. What will you do? If you drink all the water in rainy days, in the dry days, what will you do? You'll be looking for water. Am I speaking to someone in this house? You don't spend all that you have. It is wisdom. Praise the name of Jesus. Am I okay? Praise God. There's a scammer on my on my Facebook. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. Praise God. I want to say something. You don't should not be decided that these are chicken. There are no issues. Hallelujah. It will block in the next few seconds. <laughs> Blocked. It's finished. That is uh, S A G. Uh, no, it's blocked already. Yes. There's no. There's no issue there. Hallelujah. All comments will be deleted. Praise God. Some people will be wondering I'm, because I'm hearing myself while I'm preaching. <laughs> okay. I think I, I removed some of the comments. It's gone. Amen. All right. I think the comments are gone. Okay. Where do I stop now? You got to be sensitive. Look at your number. Say you have to be sensitive. You have to be what? You have to be sensitive. My name on Facebook is David Aigboswa. With now, if you watch me, just follow me online. This year. Can I, show, can I tell the most shocking part of it? It is in the midst of family that God promotes his people. <laughs> can, that is the truth. It is in the midst of famine that God promotes his people. How did God bless Abraham? There was no famine. In the midst of famine, Abraham became rich. In the midst of famine, Isaac became very, very great. Go and check go, the account that I read to you now. It was in the midst of famine when, when they, they attacked Syria that the prophet came and said, and this time tomorrow they shall be abandoned. It was in the midst of famine that the four leprous men became rich. Yes, sir. sir, this is an opportunity for greatness. Oh, you didn't hear me well. Yes, Don't join anybody to complain about Tunumbu. Tunumbu is God sent to you. Yes, is the instrument... some dollars in my account in my dorm <laughs> i just they smile every morning they are new every morning yesterday it was one sees 
Before tomorrow mind, it was 1750. Today it is 185. By tomorrow it will be 192,000. Just imagine that you have $10,000. Just imagine. You are a, you are a big boy. Because one thousand dollars will be two million naira. You are a big boy. Hello, one thousand, two thousand. You don't understand. One thousand naira is now one thousand naira. We can't time for two million to collect one thousand dollars. It's another level entirely. And guess what? It is in the midst of this season that God will bless you. So your own, don't be complaining. Just ask God, God, you know how to run this thing. <laughs> run this for me. Run it. How did he run it for Abraham? He just went to meet the king in the night. He said, you, you are a dead man. I said, why? He said, you are a dead man. I said, what did I do? He said, you took my friend's wife. That means that Pharaoh himself have a, have a relationship with God. Because if he does not have a relationship with God, Only him had it. He said, Everybody saw the light, we felt that only he had the voice because the voice was directed to him alone. There's a voice that God will be speaking to you alone. Open your ear, be sensitive. In the midst of this family, God can tell you to sow like Isaac, do crazy things. He can tell you to go on a full day fasting and prayer. He can tell you, just be sensitive. Make sure that it's not your flesh that is talking to you, it's God. Once you obey, the next thing is open doors. It's done. It's done. Somebody say it's done. Father, thank you for this word. Somebody have received a rema this night. Open your light to heaven. Say, Father, thank you because I know. I know that when men are cast down, there is a lifting up for me. I know. I know with my heart that I know that oh, I cannot be frustrated you. in the midst of man. I know, I know. I know, 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 in the midst of family, I know, I know, that in the midst of family, I know, 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 Jesus, I know. You should be praying by now. I should not tell you what to pray. You should know what to do by now. You should know what to do by now. The realm of relationship, the realm of koinonia, the realm of love, the realm of discernment, oh God. Pray. Nobody should force you to pray. Ah, yeah. You don't understand this. Ah, my God. My God. 
Ato sapa da brani gede bujatana. Zete ketus kata balaraba. Menzu sa pregado sa plana gana bujia. En zete pregede pregada bujatana. Rata tapa takata. Bring me into the realm of God. The realm of the spirit. The realm of Rema. In the name of Jesus. Lana kos kata. Lama na maria daba. In the midst of this challenge and this family of God, our Ratus Katabalaba, Zadubrana Mazataya, I enter Zata. I receive the grace to pray. I receive the grace to intercede. I receive the grace to pray. Yes. The grace to start in the gap. Rana Mazusatala, Ambelatus Kebarandiada, Ezepelekas Katabrinigesa, Zedebrakatus Katabalaba, Rana Mazusaprinigabuzatana. Mezu sapalaba, epikatus ke tabra dagara bajata, ramanus ke pelia nama zatosa, ezo sapalaba dagadia dah, rana pakam baba rakote kraga daban yang bergudu bajata, zepregatus kata bana branegesa, zantus ke tebregede santus ke barada desa tosa. Precious name. Amen. I hope this scripture is true in George chapter two that in the last days I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Right. And then your your son your sons and daughters shall what your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see what sons and daughters are still young men and young women, right? Is it correct? Yes, 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 yes. That is the Bible is correct, right? Yes. So, like the Second Kings that we read, Second Kings about chapter six, that there was found in the land. The Bible says in chapter seven, Elijah came up. Elisha. He said, Toss here the Lord by this time tomorrow. He didn't pray. He prophesied. I'd like you to prophesy to your life. Now, if you are a single lady, you don't need, you don't, see, you don't need to be praying for God, give me a husband. No. Husband should be praying God. Because he that finds a wife. He is the one to find you. Don't look for him. Lord, the one that, no, you talk to him, to God. The one that knows where he is. You talk to him, praise God, and say, Lord, direct him, that one that you have meant for me. Not another person's own, my own, to me. And he will know how to orchestrate the path of the righteous. The Bible says that the Lord ordered the step of the righteous. It's not what the Bible says. Am I speaking to somebody here? So he will need to order, ah, the Lord ordered my step ah, from out of Nigeria down to Nigeria to marry my wife. So no matter where the person is. It might not look like what you want from the beginning, but it's what you need at the end. Because there are people, when you are going through crisis, they can't stay with you. Like this, like this, my son that I'm talking about. When the guy became broke, the wife left him. Carried the children and left. Later on, sold the children. Have you seen that kind of thing? Sold the children. Sell them. No, 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 no. I said another year English. Sell the children. Three of them, sell them. Now for motor park, somebody can't see the children. Ah, where are they go? Say... Our mama sent us a message. Who will be this one? Sister, will be, who, who, who will you be to them? Say, I'm their mother. Say, you cannot be their mother. I know, I know their father, I know their mother. Who will you be? He said, I'm their auntie. Is, your, is this one? Who my auntie? We don't know her before. Hey, thief! I said, come, come rescue them. They have to call the guy. The guy came to the park and found out that he's speaking. We are already for sale. They have already sold them. Yes. The same lady is calling today and begging. After seven years calling today and begging, I want to come back. And he's asking me of my option. They are looking for my mouth. Say, Bishop, what do you think? I say, I think what you think. Abby? Because sometimes husband and wife matter, they need to pull mouth too much. He said, but I still love her, but she can I'm just thinking. I say, I'm thinking what you are thinking. I said, what do your family think about this? See, my family, is, they said, no, bluntly, no go area, no go area. I said, what do you think about it? Say, mm, Bishop, anything you say is what I will say. I said, no, it is what you say that I say. Praise God. Like now, I don't make up my mind, so I don't need to ask more. If you just bring somebody to me, you are, you are asking me, Bishop, what do you think? I said, I think exactly what you think. That thing will make you think, go carry this one, come. Even if it's not the right person, it's good for you. Hallelujah. Don't come and meet me later and say, Papa, 
what I'm seeing is what I ordered for versus what I got. It's not, don't come and meet me. Okay, I will not answer you. Every man <laughs> chooses his own by himself. But of course, I will not allow to happen. You know me, I will not allow. I will, I will not see if we are about. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me hear me well. It was the prophet that God used to speak. So I speak to your life. There shall be abundance. Like this. Amen. You might not look like it, but you will have so much surplus. Amen. In the mighty name this. of Jesus. Amen. You will have surplus this period. Amen. You will have surplus this period. Amen. On Sunday, I told you that it will not bless you. You see, the height of your lifting is determined by the hand that is lifting you. If I am the one lifting you, see where you go. Now here you go reach. But if it is the hand of God that is lifting you, now where God's hand reached, now there you go stop. And God's hand is everlasting. If he sits in the heaven and the earth is his full stop, if he can't stand up, can't stretch, and where it is deep. <laughs> just just, just an, 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 an illustration. Do you understand? That means that if God lifts you, no money can bring you down. If Ziba wanted to help Mephibosheth, he just carry Mephibosheth, can't join with his children. They can't, they all of them will become advanced. But when God decided to remember Mephibosheth, he told David about, who shall I help in the house of Saul? It was Ziba, the same Ziba that refused to help him, that came and said, there is a young man, his name is Mephibosheth. Where he was young, they carry him and he broke his leg. He cannot come here, he's a crippled. And they will say, bring him. Where men stops is where God starts from. This period, as your prophet, I prophesy to you, you will never know lack in every direction of your life. When people shall be complaining, you shall be smiling in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall be smiling in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall be smiling in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. When there was famine in the land, God told Elijah, go to, this, go to the forest. I said, be sensitive. God might be telling you to do something. Go somewhere. Sensitive. He said, I have commanded a raven, not human being, a raven. Mm. I have commanded a bed to be mm. bringing you food every day. And I command the brooks to be giving you water. When the brook dried up, God directed him to the city, from the forest to the city, to someone that does not have. What kind of God is this? This kind God, and never another one. No, they, to a, see, he made the woman a sustainer when the woman had one food. Both the woman and the prophet, two of them don't have the plan of God. When I to take care of your prophet, eh? I know what I'm telling you. Because your prophet sometimes is the evil God will use for your next level. Buy the charge card. Say, Pastor, I, don't, I just buy you the charge card. See, it's not because you need it. It's not, it's not because I need it. For your own account. And say, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Lift up your hands. As your prophet, I prophesy to you. This Tudumbu period, it is, it is in this Tunumbu period that I saw the highest money in my life. This Tunumbu period. <laughs> It is in this Tunubu period that I saw the highest money in my life. I have never seen that kind of money before. In this Tunubu period, this Tunubu period, I prophesy to you. In this Tunubu period, you too, you will join my son. Amen. In this Tunubu period, Tunubu period, Buari period is better than Tunubu period. I've been a lie. Whether I like it or not, that's the truth. Because the seed that Buari sow is the harvest that this one is reaping. Higher, higher, higher hardship. Listen to me. In the midst of hardship, that is when we will prosper. Amen. Me and you will prosper. Amen. We don't even need to say amen to this prayer. Because that's the word of God for you. It is safe, sound, and secure. Let's share grace. I'll see you on Friday. Hallelujah. How many of you came with your bitter cola? Alright, let's let's leave it to us on Friday because some of you you are not here. You are not here. How many of you came with yours? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing will be bitter in your life. In the midst of this bitterness, nothing will be bitter in your life. In the name of Jesus. Sweetness is your portion. Sweetness is your portion. Sweetness is your portion. Sweetness is your portion. When men are cast down, you shall be lifted up. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree over your life. Nothing becomes bitter in your life. Sweetness. Prosper. 
Amen. Be lifted. Amen. Prosper. Amen. Be fruitful. Amen. You don't have a job, miracle job is coming. Yeah. It means where people are losing their job, you shall be having a better job. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. You know what to do with the beta cola. You just peel a little bit, eat it, prophesy. Anyone that says I will not see sweetness, may their life be bitter. In the name of Jesus. Do that by 11.55. 11.55. Do that now. Do that 11.55. The Lord bless you. Let's give our offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we give our offering, our offerings are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Let's give our offering quickly. Our time is fast spent. Our Facebook life. I would have suggested that you do that after the church, those of you. Let's give our offering. Father, as we give our offering, may our offering be blessed in the name of Jesus. Bless every giver in Jesus' precious name. You can make sure you give your tithe. Those of you that are covenant partners, those of you that made pledges, on Friday, NIBG is becoming one week now. Amen. You are owing God, Igbese. And I must collect that money. You cannot escape it. Because it's for your own good. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm not just blessed. I am too blessed. I am favored. I'm not just favored. I am too favored. I am protected. Not just protected. I am too be affected in Jesus' precious name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God.